I'm convinced A-level psychology is one of the simplest and easiest A-levels. Although there's a high volume of content, I believe you can still achieve an A-star without even needing to attend class, as long as you work smartly and you have the right work ethic. And this is how I did it. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new around here, my name's Sunny. Today we're going to be talking about how I achieved an A-star in my A-level psychology course. Make sure you look in the description below and you browse through the timestamps and jump around in the video to bits which you find interesting or feel like will be helpful to you. First point we're going to touch on is refine your notes. From what I experienced in my psychology classes is that we'd be given booklets for each topic and this would have a lot of writing in them and some people would be tempted to like learn or everything that's on those pages but what you actually need to do is you need to take that information and condense it and refine it into the key points which are only important what this will do is it will lower the amount of work that you actually have to learn because when you're just learning the key points that will actually score you the marks you can get through a lot more content in a shorter time by doing that. So my actionable advice would be to turn all of that information into very plain, simple English. Don't worry about being flary because that's not what's gonna score you the marks when you're writing your essays, writing your answers. You wanna be punchy and you wanna conserve time because the tests are long and there's a lot of things to write. So you wanna be straight to the point. My next tip is how I went about learning all the essays and also learning all the content in um, each topic. So each topic will come with about two or three essays. And now what you can do is you can learn the essay separately and you can learn the information in the topic separately. But what I realized is that the information from the topic is actually derived from the essay and not the other way around. So if you focus solely on the essay, you will get all your essential information in there 95% of the time. There are a few things that don't make it into the essay and they'll stand out. They'll be their own little caveat to the topic. And usually you'll, that will be highlighted within your lessons or in the PowerPoint presentation. Now that you're looking at your essay, the way I went about breaking this down to learn it separately is I took the AO1, which is the straight recall facts, and I would make them into separate flashcards. And then I took the three or four AO3 that's provided within the essay and turned them into flashcards. Within each topic, you are given a bigger range than three or four um, AO3 points, but you don't need that many to score highly, to score top marks in your essay. And you won't be required to provide unique AO3 points within the test paper itself. So for example, you can have an essay for memory, for short-term memory, and you can use the same AO3 in that essay question as you did for a single AO3 question earlier in the paper. So save yourself some time, be efficient, and only learn a few AO3 from the essay and which you can apply entirely to the whole topic. Now that you've learned your essay, Another great way of actually remembering the structure of your essay is to turn your actual essay plan into a flashcard itself. For example, when writing your essay plan on the flashcard, on one side you put multi-store model of memory essay, and then you put AO1 times six, AO3 times three. On the other side, you put a one word reminder for each AO1, and then you put the name of the person who provided the study which we're going to talk about in the AO3 for each one. So that now you know each separate bit from that topic, but you also have an image in your head of how that will lay out in an essay plan. Because what I found before I did that, turning my essay plans into flashcards, I would know each bit of information, but I didn't know how to pull it out of my head when I needed it in the context of an essay and doing this made it a lot easier and then I was able to reel off multiple essays just like that and especially for subjects which I really used this method intensely on for example schizophrenia I 
could reel off about 15 essays just off the top of my head because I knew them that well because they were in the form of a condensed flashcard. So that's definitely what I'll do with my essay plans. Because psychology is so simple, this method will work throughout the entire subject. And this is why I say it's one of the easiest A-levels. Not to say that it's easy because all A-levels are hard and just the sheer volume of the psychology content alone makes it very difficult. But for, for a whole subject to be able to be condensed into this kind of conveyor belt technique of getting the information in, condensing it, then memorizing it, it just makes it very simple. You know exactly what you need to do and then it's just up to you to do it because the application isn't hard with this kind of content. And now my third point is to speed up the process. I think being in class for two hours and a half, which is what my uh, college did, is actually unnecessary because the teachers would read from the PowerPoint or they would read from the booklet. And I found when during lockdown, when we were given the PowerPoints, I could actually go through the PowerPoint a lot faster by myself. And so what I did was I'd take the PowerPoints, I'd make digital flashcards, which is something that we'll get onto, copy and paste exactly what I needed. So I wouldn't need to condense it myself. I'd just copy and paste the bits which are necessary into my flashcard making app. And then I'd be able to go through all of the flashcards once, which I created from that lesson within that entire two hours and a half, instead of just listening to the teacher and doing in my opinion, pointless practice questions because all we do was copy from the notes in front of us because we would not learned the information. Yet. Now I'd removed all that and I've been able to go through the content, make my flashcards and do my flashcards instead of just listening and doing pointless questions. You don't need to listen to someone read through it because you can read through it yourself and copying AO3s from the whiteboard is kind of useless and Honestly, that's why I fell asleep in a lot of my psychology classes because it's just not engaging. Whereas what I'm suggesting you do is a lot faster and a lot more time efficient. Ask your teacher for the PowerPoint in advance or the PDF file or the Word document of the booklets that they're going to be handing out in your set in your lesson. And then you can actually go through it and use it as a bit of pre-reading as well. You can go through it by yourself during lesson even, or you can say, can I not come to my lessons anymore? Don't know how that will go down. But if you have it during lesson and you're allowed your own computers in lesson, you can be making your own flashcards and kind of ignoring what the teacher is saying, going through it at a faster speed and not having to do the activities, which I think are a bit of a waste of time during lesson. And then that will save you time from revising at home and you'll learn the stuff faster. My fourth point is to use digital flashcards. Now, I'm not saying this is the only way to get an A star in psychology, but this is the way which I found, and this is the simplest way that I can think of, since it uses all the scientifically backed ways of efficiently learning and memorizing information. And I say digital for my point previously, because you can copy and paste from the PowerPoints or the documents already given out. But digital flashcards have the added advantage of being able to be manipulated by algorithms or specific apps such as Anki using space repetition. So now what this does is say you have a say you have a schizophrenia lesson on Monday and you make your flashcards and you go through them and then you go through your flashcards on Tuesday from that same lesson and you get them all right. What this app will do is it will push your flashcards two days in advance so you won't see it again on the Wednesday but you'll see it again on the Thursday. And then if you get them all right again, they'll push them a week further away. And so what this does is, it makes sure that the information stays in your head, but at the same time, you don't waste your time going over and over and over the same flashcards, which you know you're going to get right. And this is good because it tests you at the point in which your forgetting curve is about to hit that point of no return, and you're replenishing it, that, um, that memory tank, essentially and then it goes back up top and it will diminish at a slower rate. And so I use this technique and I can still remember points from my schizophrenia lesson and I've not seen that bit of work for almost a year now and I can still remember it to that degree. And so I think if you're actively doing this, you can have all that information stuck in your head and 
then there's no reason why you won't be able to score highly because a lot of psychology is just straight recall. Apps I recommend are Anki for their space repetition. There is actually another app that is actually digital and on your phone which you can use and I actually used it for a little bit but I can't find it at the minute but I'll put a picture of it somewhere here and the link will be in the description for it. My fifth tip will be how to tackle statistics, how to choose your statistical tests for analysis and psychology. When I first came across this topic I was kind of like hmm this is a kind of rough way to learn these tests through flashcards because there's quite a lot of overlap and linkage and it's easy to mix it up so what i decided to do is actually make a quizlet and i shared this with a few of my friends and we all came to the conclusion that this was a great way of learning these statistical tests we gamified it by using the snap feature on quizlet and so we could compete against each other and try better our scores each time and the more you do this this is essentially active recall because the answer is not in front of you you have to ask yourself and then find it and so what this does is you're learning at the same time as actually playing a game and so i became very good at telling you which pathway you would take depending on the different characteristics of the experiment done i could tell you which statistical test you would need to use and this is a great way of learning the statistical tests and I'll actually link my Quizlet which I still have access to in the description so feel free to use it. My last bit of advice will be to use practice questions but maybe not for the reason you think. See I told you a lot of psychology is just straight recall and so what you're actually using your practice papers for in this instance is to actually just practice writing quickly because after every psychology exam my hand would ache and I would say to myself I really need to practice writing faster to make this experience a lot less painful but I think that is actually something very useful that people should do and apart from that the value of practice papers will be doing AO2 questions which are questions which you need to have an application of the AO1s which you've learned which are just discrete facts and then also the the mathematical research methods questions because in research methods the questions can vary a lot and they're not as much as recally they're they're similar to um, AO2 questions but not quite but yeah I think for practice papers you should focus triage the AO2 questions the maths questions and the ones on research methods which aren't about recall and then you should definitely triage the six markers 16 markers to practice your writing speed and then you should be all good for your exams an important thing to note about using these spaced repetition applications is that consistency is key and the thing which is a l almost everybody's downfall about psychology apart from the highest achievers is that they're not consistent in their revision people will have one topic today for example memory and they won't touch it again until we're getting tested or until we have a mock and that's a lot of space in between because there's so much volume in psychology we're introducing a new topic literally every other week I'd say and so the beauty of space repetition is that it keeps it current and then you don't have to go back and start from square one and memorize literally five topics at the same time for literally one test which you probably won't start revising for until a week before the test and I tell you what cramming does not work with psychology I tried it at the beginning of year 13 and I got a C and I was like, okay, we're not doing that again. We're not doing that again. So yeah, definitely stay on top of your flashcards. And that's all you need to do. That is all you need to do and you'll get an A star, I promise you. There are other ways to do it, but this way definitely works. Thank you for making it to the end of the video, guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my other videos. Check out my other videos on A-levels. And I'll see you guys next week.